Recent news reaching Nigerians sometime last week exposed illegal oil mining and refinery activities taking place in River State. Some of the perpetrators were arrested with the governor on Yesen Wike declaring war on the illegal activity. However, another development has come to light as Governor Wiki has accused a divisional police officer in River State of operating an illegal refinery in the state. He has now demanded his redeployment from River State. Now, last week, Governor Wiki had inspected two illegal refining sites recently discovered in Ikweri and Emoha local government areas by the council chairman. Well, joining us to discuss this is Samuel Wanosike, the executive chairman of Ikweri local government area in River State. Before that, we'll bring you a quick report on the visit of the governor to those illegal refineries. And when we come back, we'll have the conversation. Stay with us. Governor Wiki takes a tour of the illegal bunkering sites and it's a long walk through the track roads into the forest of Okodo community in Ikwere local government area. He moves into the forest of Iba community in Emoha local government area with the River State Commissioner of Police Iboka Friday and other security chiefs. The mission is to uncover some crude oil illegal refining sites. Governor Wiki talks tough. We can't be doing this and be killing my people. No reasonable government will allow that. Right. And I can tell you, with all due respect, we'll take this matter. Where's that I'm here, sir. We'll take this matter very seriously. Attorney General, all these matters with police, you have to retain the files so that we can prosecute the matter on our own. On our own. I don't want any compromises anywhere. Mm. And then, too, it will not be in the ministry. You have to constitute a legal team. Go and get our friends all over the country. Constitute a legal team so that we can do this prosecution to the last. Governor Wike directs the State Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Professor Zakio Sadango, a senior advocate of Nigeria, to take over the case files of illegal crude oil refinery operators arrested by the police. It's a serious matter, and I'm going to take it. If I is a war, it's not for people, they're yeah. a cartel. Yeah. You must go and arrest that uh, chief WJ uh, watcher. WJ watcher. Yeah. You must arrest that um, Fubara Ohaka. For Ohaka. I want to. Uh, uh, you, you must arrest them. Yeah. You must. It doesn't matter how highly placed you are. If you like be the primary ruler, if any traditional ruler that is involved, pick him for me. Yes, sir. Let him understand that the law does not respect anybody. And I can assure the people of the United States who will fight this matter headlong. I will fight it to the last. He wonders why the establishment of modular refineries, as promised by the federal government, is yet to function. And I said to the federal government, if you are not willing to do anything, don't promise people. Don't promise people. You do that, you do modular. How can you allow this modular? How? How? And the DPO that was involved, please tell IG. I have no right to dismiss the police officer. But I'm telling you, I don't want the man again in my state. People should take him to another state to do a bunk, not uh, the bus state. Perhaps this could be the straightening point to restoring clean air in areas affected by soot in the state. Well, once again, joining us is the local government chairman for Equerry Local Government in River State, Samuel Wanusike. Um, Mr. Wanusike, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for this opportunity and good evening for allowing me to use uh, your, your platform to speak and communicate with Nigeria and talk this much. I appreciate it. So it's interesting because I used to live in River State and I, I remember in 2016 when we made this an issue, people called into the radio station. There was even a protest at Government House on the issue of the suits, which, I mean, every single person who lives in River State understands how serious that is. And, of course, we found out that it was as a result of illegal bunkering. But why is it now that the governor is going after culprits? I do remember that when we were asking the government to deal with this issue, they said it was a federal government's jurisdiction. But why now? Yeah, you know, uh, first of all, you must respect the rule of law as it's enshrined in our constitution. If they say a matter is listed in the exclusive list, then the state and the local government will have no business to come into it. But, you know, um, uh, the vice president, a man we respect so much, a man of God, a pastor, um, he came to the Niger letter and told us that the federal government has made an arrangement 
to bring modular refinery to the people of the Niger Delta, and that uh, that modular refinery will end the issue of this illegal bunker. And we believed it, and um, we waited all this while for the modular refinery to come on board. But like uh, this current uh, uh, APC-led federal government, like Nigerians are now used to, there's no more uh, a story for anybody to think about. It's in the marketplace that uh, this federal government is used to shifting goalposts in every issue they have promised Nigerians. First of all, they promised Nigeria that they will fight insecurity, they failed. They promised Nigeria that they will improve in our economy, they have failed. They promised Nigeria they will clean up Ogoni, they have failed. They promised Nigerians they will uh, make dollar, uh, uh, one naira to one dollar, they have failed. In everything they have failed. So we thought they would have succeeded in the modular refinery issue. So we had to be patient. But mm -hmm. it's now obvious and clear to us that the APC led administration has no plan to talk up to talk about even the modular refinery anymore. Because as we are talking, we are in our election year already. So it is um, better late than never that the governor has come to see that, look, if we keep quiet and we keep waiting for this federal government, we will die. Our people will keep dying. And the problem now is that not even the economic sabotage that's involved. Our, the health hazard we are suffering. Um, the young babies born are suffering it. Pregnant women are suffering it. Strangers who visit us are suffering it. We will live here are suffering it. You, you wash your white clothes. I like putting on white clothes. You wash your white clothes, you spray them, you wake up, it turns to black. You go and take your bath in the morning to go to work in your clean bedroom. The next thing you find out everywhere is dark. You, in fact, it, it is something we cannot take. So we now have to take uh, uh, our dust in our hands since the federal government has abandoned us. Like they have abandoned a lot of it. Even what is happening in this security, okay. everybody is not looking for a way to survive. Okay, so, so for so, me, so, what the government have done now is to save the life of the people of River State like he did during the COVID-19. The so, governor so, has said... So why ask local government like chairman... I'm sorry, why... You started by saying that you were respecting and obeying the rule of law. So I'm trying to understand if now you've jettisoned that rule of law to do what you're doing, in your words, to save the lives of Rivers people. Again, why ask local government chairman to tackle the issue instead of... I mean, looking at it from the state government's perspective, what powers do the local government chairman have to deal with this issue? No, hold, 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 hold on, you're misunderstanding the matter. The local government is an integral part. Is in fact, is the government closest to the people. I understand. The state government is not close to the people. The state government is still... That's why I like Governor Zeboye so much. He's very straightforward in his dealing. He knows that he cannot sit in government as a protocol and realize all the sites where these issues are going on. But as chief executive officers of the local government system, the local government chairman that runs the local government has his foot soldiers in all the political wards, and he has information of what is happening. Like you know, that any crime that lasts more than 48 hours, government is involved. And so because the local government was worried that this, this activity is not in, in their purview, they had to wait for this decision to be taken by the state. Now, what the state is doing is not as if we are not aware that it's this issue of oil bunker or oil and gas in exclusive, but we have we are not we are talking about the health implication now. We have to be alive first of all when we talk about rule of law. We have to be alive when we talk about the federal government. When we have seen clear that President Muhammad Bani does not even consider whether we live or we die, then we have to wake up and say, No, let's fight this matter with what is available to us. And if any local government chairman tells you that the government is not giving him back it, the chairman is lying. Because the local government chairman has the support of the governor. He has given us security agents. He has told you that if you discover a site, there's two million naira for you. And all the local government chairmen are mustering everything they have to make sure all the sites are crushed. As we speak today in the current local government, all the sites we have identified, even those who are doing trucking and using our routes, we are arresting them and taking them to the courts. And they are appearing before the court, and they will go to prison. Okay. And we are impounding all the all the all the illegal uh, uh, products. Okay. Nobody, nobody, no stone will be left unturned. All right. Not to do with politics. They are not to do with how highly placed you are. Okay. We want to be alive first as Nigerians. All right. Let's talk about the economic aspect of this because uh, you know there are many reasons. I, I have had to, you know, um, question some of these people who are involved in this illegal bunkering, and they say, well, there is no source of 
livelihood, other source of livelihood, and, and that the government has abandoned them. And they're not talking about the federal government, by the way. They're talking about the state government in terms of... It's not know, possible. Hold they, they, on, hold on. Let, let me the land. State government did not promise hang on, just hang on, finance. hang on. Let me finish. Now, it is the duty of every state government to, one way or the other, uh, better the lot of its people. And these people that are, are, are hosting these illegal refineries are citizens of your state. Now, is it enough for the government of River State to drive away the Bow Fire Boys without giving them an alternative means of survival? What, what is the assurance that they will not resort to another sort of crime that might become also uh, a problem to the River State government? So what is the plan in the long term? Hold on, before you even ask this question, I want to ask you a question. Do you well, say I'm asking the that question. God President Muhammad Bar Okay, okay, no, hold on. Okay, in answering you, let me just make this analogy. Yeah. Are you saying his promises that he made to Nigerians restructuring, fighting of insecurity, fighting corruption, excess borrowing, all the failures of President Buhari, that all 200 million Nigerians should take up to arms and hit the street? and start committing crime? Are you saying that that is going to be the result of effect? No. You cannot dig a hole to close another hole. No. You cannot. We are saying that, look, now we need to be alive first. And we believe that because the APC led administration has failed, that in 2023, the People's Democratic Party will produce a government that will be able to manage Nigerians properly. And we you're going too far. Answer. You're going to talk about Nigerians. We're talking now, about your answer. backyard allow here. Me, allow me, River allow State. Me, allow me answer. Allow me answer. Well, allow I've been waiting. You, Let me answer you. Good. Then, if by the grace of God, PDP comes on board, we will bring in professionals. We will just make promises as a people. PDP don't, we don't go to all the states the PDP is doing this way. We don't make promises. When we say we'll do a thing, we'll get it done. All the PDP governors, in Nigeria what is the River State government to going to program. do about now, the unemployment state, in, in, in the in, state? In, 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 hold on now. Unemployment in River State. The River State government is, pro is providing jobs. The construction sites that River State have turned to, rivers men and women are those working in those sites. All the projects that you see that is commissioned back to back to back, they are not falling from the moon. <laughs> they are done by human beings in River State. Now, if you say that the fish is rotting at the head, what will you do with the body? First of all, we run a federal system. If River State government wants to attract foreign investment today into River State, we need an approval from the federal government. Okay. That's what we're talking about restructuring. Okay. You're still taking us back to that place. We're talking about restructuring. If you restructure the federal system properly and you say we owe the federal government to pay them tax, that it is us now to manage our resources. We should manage the oil and the gas. We should have our own state police. Then the river state government can say, we are going to get partners all over the world to come and invest in river state. And through the term, river state, act, actual treasure base of this nation. Okay. We are the treasure base of Nigeria, but okay. we been stifled by the federal government who has okay. locked up all our available resources, even during COVID. Okay. When we say, don't come in. Federal government have to insisted go. that oil workers will come in without COVID tests. And that's what gave us a spike. You know the truth. Well, we and the problem we are saying, Nigerians are asking media mugus like you, please don't use your platform to sell lies to the people of Nigeria. The time has come all for right. all of us, we for have people to go. in Nigeria that we can trust. We have to we go. Can. We have to go. Unfortunately, uh, we are out of time. I want to say thank you. Uh, Samuel Wanasike is the local government chairman in Equerry Local Government of River State. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Well, that is the show for tonight. We want to thank you all for being part of the conversation. I am Mary Anna Kuhn. I'll see you tomorrow on Plus Politics. Have a good evening.